Welcome everybody. Hi, I'm Jory. I'm the Coffee Psychic, your host for another wonderful edition of River West Flowing. Today's topic is going to be reincarnation. Uh, I have a guest with me today, Miss Kimberly Garner. And Kimberly, thank you. Welcome for coming. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. Um, we want to talk about the topic of reincarnation. Um, so you're just like every other person out there. You know, there are some things you know about, some things you don't know about. And um, have you ever heard of reincarnation? Um, a little bit, but I don't really know too much about it. Okay, so what, what things do you know or what do you think you know? Because remember, um, you're representing everybody out there, right? Right. <coughs> um, uh, people pass away and then they see themselves. That's kind of about it, really. Okay. Yeah, I really don't know that much. Okay, so, so I'd love to share with you, you sure. know, about reincarnation. So reincarnation is considered rebirth of the soul. So when somebody dies, they will um, go into the other side, into the astral planes, and um, go through, um, you know, a process in which they look back at their lessons. What did they learn? What didn't they learn? Things like that in this lifetime. Yeah, and they say many times that, um, say, uh, in one lifetime, you've got lesson A, lesson B, and lesson C. And um, let's say that you passed lesson A and lesson C, but, man, you poorly failed on B. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's like, oh, no, right? <laughs> so then um, your soul is going to say, gosh, I've got to go back, and I want to redo that because I want to learn that lesson. And so then you'll go ahead and get reincarnated into another body, which, in the, of course, this lifetime, we have to come in as a baby, grow up in the growing process from birth to old age or whatever it is you choose to leave. Uh, there are, are a slew of lessons. As you know, you've had many lessons. I've had many lessons. Yes. And I know all of our you know, uh, listening audiences had, I'm sure, uh, a ton of lessons. And um, so in this process, uh, what they're saying is the reason we come back is to um, perfect our soul. And many people, some people will say we've only had a couple of past lives. And uh, some people will actually look at their wrist and count the rings around their wrist and say, oh, this is how many lifetimes you're going to have. That's cool. Yeah. But I don't know that I, I buy into that concept, <laughs> right? So how many count your how, how many uh, how many lessons? It looks like one. <laughs> <laughs> looks like you've got two rings. So I beat I you. I, I think you've got three rings around my wrist, right? I've got two chances. <laughs> <laughs> two chances to make it good, right? Make it good, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they say we reincarnate because um, we have to have every experience there is to be had. Can you imagine how many lifetimes that would take? A lot. Yeah, a lot. Um, so that's the that's the purpose of reincarnation, and um, a lot of religions hold this to be a, a, one of their tenets and their beliefs. I know that's Buddhism, that's Hinduism. Um, the Catholics, I don't really believe uh, we're big believers in reincarnation, but and I was born and raised a Catholic, so I positively at this point completely believe in reincarnation. So. so can can everyone be reincarnated? Um, I personally believe that everyone does get reincarnated at this point. And um, even though some people think, like you'll hear some people saying, I don't believe in that sort of thing. And, you know, then you've got atheists that just believe that when they die, and some of the other religions too believe that just when they die that that's it. They're dead. There's nothing more. Um... I believe at that point that they just kind of go into a sleep. And then I also believe that when we die that we uh, have spirit helpers that come to help us and they kind of like wake us up. And then we have like our life review. And then we decide are we going to go back and, you know, finish doing more, more work down here on Earth. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fun. Yeah. So, and I think... You know, um, so for some proof, I'd say for some proof that I've heard, you can either, I mean, I've seen some children that come up with some amazing stories about uh, having remembered past lives and things like that. 
I literally have a girlfriend whose son is Matthew. And since he could start putting anything together, he started building two towers. He'd put popsicle sticks together. He'd put anything together that he possibly could. And then, and I don't know if like he'd push them over or whatever, but he would see the Twin Towers on TV and he's told, he told his mommy, he says, I died there. Oh, wow. And then also he kept getting fire trucks, fire trucks, fire trucks, fire trucks. And she had different conversations with him, but he said that he died there as a fireman. Eventually he said that. Oh. She wasn't coaching him. She wasn't prompting him. She was just inquiring. And it was very interesting because, um, you know, she went to look up the fireman. And he said his name was Matthew at the time. Oh, wow. And I think there were like 13 to 15 firemen that died uh, fighting that fire, fighting that catastrophe that we experienced on 9-11. Hmm. Yeah. There was also, uh, so I've got a couple of things that I remember about these kids. I had a client just last week, and she said to me, she goes, do you believe in reincarnation? She goes, my son is starting to say some very strange things to me. I said, really? I said, what's he saying? She started giving me a bunch of different stories about him saying about remembering when he was alive before. And then uh, another day out of the blue, he said, you know, Mommy, I'm going to grow up to be like you and Daddy, and then I'm going to grow up more to be like Grandma and Grandpa. And then after that, I'm going to be very small again. Oh. And it was like, oh, my God. So he's like remembering the reincarnation cycle. Hmm. So do you know if you ever had any experiences yourself? Um, I have. And I had, um, years and years and years ago, I got interested in hypnosis. I just wanted to, you know, I had been, I'm a lot more relaxed than what I was years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little more nervous and stuff like that. And I heard about hypnosis and self-hypnosis, how you can do self-hypnosis and just kind of relax yourself and go into meditations and things like that. So I was doing that one day. I uh, took a class over at uh, Richard J. Daly College with one of my girlfriends. And um, <coughs> excuse me, the teacher had uh, asked for a volunteer. I'm going to volunteer for anything that I possibly can. <laughs> I love doing this stuff. And so she um, brought me to the front of the class, and she had a lounger. So uh, I reclined on the lounger, and um, she put me into the altered state. She talked me back into a, a past life. And suddenly, I was um, back in Williamsburg, Pennsylvania. Now, the way I know it's Williamsburg, Pennsylvania, was because she'd be asking me some questions. So I'm sitting here, and I'm inside of my old cabin, you know, and it was really one great big room, and there was a, a big fireplace, and there was a cauldron, you know, a cooking pot. And um, I'd never really ever seen anything like this in real life, so I could only count on the uh, visions that I was having but it actually pulled out into the room on a, a hook, and I could, I could feel the fire. I could describe every single thing in that room, and it was completely real to me. And then uh, she instructed us to go outside, or excuse me, me, to go outside. I could, she says, pick up the dirt with your hands, feel the dirt, and I could feel the dirt going through my hands, and it was red. It was red dirt, and I was going like, wow, that's weird, that's red dirt. So, uh, my name was Marcy Caliber at that time, and um, I had a couple of brothers, but I really couldn't, I couldn't feel the presence of my mom as much as my dad. And um, it was so interesting, but when she brought me into my death experience, you know, she goes, it's okay. She goes, how did you die? Go to the time in which you died. So I went there, and I just started crying my heart out. I was bawling and bawling. I couldn't stop crying. Oh. And she goes, that's okay. You'll remember at a later time. So now this was such an impactful experience for me. I think this is probably what had me become a hypnotherapist, okay? I wanted more information. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> this, this is so real. It's like, oh, my God, yes. So I went back for another session. And um, at this time, now I'm in trance again and it's later in life, 
And she's, she said, where are you at? And I said, Williamsburg, Virginia. I saw myself get on a train. I saw my dad put me on a train. I had grown up. I was going to become a school teacher. So I was a school mom later uh -huh. on, right? And um, it was, in, it's like I'm watching a video in my head, but I knew it was me because it felt like me, all right? The whole thing was completely me. And um, when I look back at being a school teacher, I know that I have got such a respect for books. It's, it's crazy. It's like you can't throw this book out. You know, you have to take care of your books. Um, and I collect books. I don't read them all. But I just, <laughs> you have no idea how many books I have. It's, it's just crazy. Um, so then, you know, we went through that whole process. When I said Williamsburg, Virginia, when you're under hypnosis, you start questioning yourself. Because I thought, you know, I must be crazy. I'm not geographically amazing. I'm not that educated as far as geography <laughs> goes. And I thought, I must be making this up. I must be crazy. How can there be a Williamsburg, Pennsylvania and a Williamsburg, Virginia? I don't know if I believe this stuff. And um, so when I came out of trance, I said to Carol, I said, I said, Williamsburg, Pennsylvania, I was born there, and now I'm in Williamsburg, Virginia. I said, she goes, there's a Williamsburg, Pennsylvania, and a Williamsburg, Virginia. Wow. I said, oh my <laughs> God, seriously? I said, okay, cool. So now I'm really starting to believe this more. And one day, my boyfriend and I decided to take a road trip. And we we're gonna go into Pennsylvania. Now you have no idea how excited I was. I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. <laughs> I'm going to go back to a past life place that I lived. I'm like, oh, I wonder what it's going to feel like. Oh, my God. I was so excited. So I went, and I said, Bill, pull the car over. I want to drive into Pennsylvania. <laughs> now, I've got goosebumps talking about this right now. And I was like, this is going to be the coolest experience of my life. He said, okay, honey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I got into the driver's seat. And I, I drove across the Pennsylvania border, and guess what happened? What? I became so angry and so inflamed and oh, so wow. upset. And what I heard in my head was, I swore I'd never come back here again. And here I am a lifetime away. And I was like, where did that come from? I, in, in an instant... I was so thrilled, I was excited, and suddenly I was instantly angry, like my soul said, uh-uh. I said I'd never come back here again. That's what made me believe in reincarnation. That was one of them, because I thought, why would I have such an instant, dramatic reaction to this, you know? And when I think about, um, I don't want to use a derogatory word, but I'm going to say hillbillies, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> when I think about Pennsylvania as a kid, I thought, oh, you know, I see the, you know, Beverly Hillbillies and stuff <laughs> like that, that show. I thought, oh, Pennsylvania is just nothing but a bunch of hillbillies, and I don't like Pennsylvania. I just remember as a child, never, ever liking Pennsylvania. Why would I not like Pennsylvania? I don't know about Pennsylvania. When I've said that to other people, they're like, well, Pennsylvania was a very advanced state. You know, they this, they that, and I'm like, well, that's not the reaction I had to it. So was you ever there before, prior to going? Never. Oh, never? No, I never oh. traveled. Oh, wow. No. For me to travel with my boyfriend, that was one of the earlier times I started traveling. I see. I mean, I remember going to Florida earlier. I'll tell you what, there's an organization called the ARE. It's called the Association for Research and Enlightenment. They put on so many different spiritual uh, classes for people. It's based on uh, Edgar Casey, the man called the Sleeping Prophet. We can uh, we can go into some of his information in a little bit if you'd like. Sure. But I took one of the classes on reincarnation, and in the class, um, they would have on the monitor. They said, "Just sit back. We want you to just relax. Sit back." And when you see the different uh, states or different parts of the world that we're going to flash on here, you may have, you know, some sort of reaction, and you can just mark down on your piece of paper 
what reaction, you know, because they gave us a piece of paper with all the different parts of the world that they were showing on the um, screen, and also the musics. So what they stated was, um, as we're listening to this, if you have a, a positive reaction, you were there in a past life because your soul is going like, oh, I remember that. Oh, that's wonderful. And if you have a bad reaction, your soul was there. <laughs> your soul was there. You did something. <laughs> did you have many good experiences out of this? <laughs> I, had, I had a lot of wonderful experiences, as a matter of fact. Uh, there were a lot of things that I recognized on the screen. My soul recognized it. It just felt amazing. And um, <clears throat> it was really fascinating. And the music, it's like, it's like, oh, my God, that's wonderful. But then if you had a neutral experience, then you probably didn't live in that part of the world ever mm -hmm. because there's no recognition. There was nothing that triggered you. So that was fascinating. Um, there's a lot of people that have studied reincarnation and they, you know, they teach the classes, things like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, there, there are so many things about, you know, reincarnation and, um, and astral projection and past life regressions. What it's are those? about the soul leaving your body. There's, there's something that's kind of coming to me right now that I'd like to share with you. This was a very impactful regression. One of my friends had gone uh, to a hypnotherapist to quit smoking. And um, she ended up going in there. And he did his work differently than I do. When I sit with somebody in, in hypnosis, I'll sit with them and I'm watching them. And he does his uh, a little differently because he'll watch from a different room. And then he'll still talk to them. Well, in some fashion... Uh, some way she slipped into a much deep, deeper trance and she started having uh, some difficulties like she was remembering some stuff she was just there for uh, smoking cessation right quitting smoking right <laughs> and when she came out that's why and I and I know this person who did the hypnosis I just know that they weren't aware of what happened what happened was my girlfriend came out. Uh, after she came out, the issue that she slipped back into was not resolved. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> so she had something come up from a past life. And when something comes up, you're going to want to address this. Okay? Sure. It wasn't addressed. From that point on, she started having horrible panic attacks. Oh, no. She actually... Um, she already had an issue about going to the dentist. She had an issue about getting on airplanes. I mean, it was pretty horrifying for her. Now it's intensified by, I don't know, 50. It was really horrible. And <coughs> actually to the point to where she wanted to put herself in a mental hospital. That's, uh, that's the true that's story. Right. That's how bad it was. So she called me up, and she said, can you please uh, help me? And I said, get over here as soon as possible. We'll do a regression. What happened was she said she saw herself on a cross. And it's like, okay, well, let's look at that, you know, because she said when she had slipped into this thing, she had seen herself on a cross. I said, well, come on over. Let's get you back into this regression. Uh, when we got her into the regression, she was around the time that Jesus Christ walked the earth. Now, I don't know that she was at the time that Jesus Christ was alive, but in that time period, how did they punish people or kill them on a cross? That was just the way of the day right so she found herself on the cross I took her back there I said please tell me what's going on and also after she had the other regression she couldn't breathe properly that's because on the cross she was suffocating that's how she was dying I said okay well let's get you out of there let's put you before the time that you were on the cross dying where you were you know why were you on the cross she goes mm -hmm. I was being punished I said what did you do she said, I was a man. She said, I was in the market. And <clears throat> I had to steal food because my children, my family were starving. She said, and she said, I lost my job. And this is how I got it. This is how I got the food. They caught me. And they, they put me up and they killed me. I said, OK. I said, well, I want to tell you, good for you that you're trying to save your family, number one. I'm so sorry that you got caught. Yeah. You know, so I said, let's go back through this. I said, can you forgive yourself 
for stealing and getting caught? She goes, positively. I says, can you see you're doing something right for your family? She goes, positively. I says, can you forgive those guys for killing you because that they were the law, they had to uphold the law, and stuff like that. I said, can you forgive them and let it go? And she said, positively. I said, because if you were a police officer, you'd have to do the same thing, right? She goes, yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So how do you feel now? She goes, I feel real good. Oh. I said, okay. <laughs> So then we talked about some other things. She had the fears of the dentist. She had the fears of getting in an airplane. When we were done with that regression, Kim, she came out of it feeling amazing. She was able to go to the dentist. She called me back up. She goes, I had a dentist appointment. She goes, normally I have to take Valium before going to the dentist just to get into the car to go to the dentist. She said, I walked right in. They did the dental work. I said, are you kidding me? She wow. said, no. That was a, a, a huge feat for her. And then also... She got in an airplane. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> so the things for people, if people want to find out if they've uh, got any past lives or had any past lives, they can go to a hypnotherapist. You know, uh, look in your area, find somebody that you, that you uh, trust, you know, go on the Better Business Bureau, make sure that they're accredited and they've got a good reputation. And feel comfortable about going to these people and having a regression. And then you can, you can explore all sorts of amazing things. You want to make sure that they know what they're doing. And um, it's really fascinating. Another way that you can tell if you've had past lives is look around your house. Look around your house. My whole front room, completely Egyptian. Oh. <laughs> I love everything about Egypt. I haven't gotten there uh, yet. And... Um, but everything I have are, I've got like eight foot tall sarcophaguses or nine foot tall sarcophaguses. I've got short ones, I've got pyramids, I've got everything. And I have had a couple of um, regressions as far as um, Egypt goes. I had one really cute one. So let's stop and think about it, you guys. When you think about being reincarnated, wouldn't you think you were a princess? A king, maybe? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what would you think you were? If you think back, have you ever had a regression? Not that I can think of in the moment. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if you were going to go under hypnosis and have a regression, this is, again, we're talking about reincarnation here, right? What do you think you possibly were or could have been? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> but it's interesting. It is, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, now, now I'm, like, curious. <laughs> right. Well, we'll have to do it sometime, I know, right? <laughs> So, I really thought, you know, I, I don't know if it's just my ego or what it is, but I thought, <laughs> maybe I was a princess, or, gosh, I wonder what I was. And so, after I had done the uh, Marcy Caliber one, you kind of get, like, thirsty for going, like, I've got to check this out. What, <laughs> what other lifetimes did I have? You know, right. I want to see. So, I went in through another regression, and they, I'm now in a barn, with the horses cleaning up the horse poop. That was my job. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't like a, one of the king's soldiers or something like that. I'm like, dang it. So I'm sitting here cleaning up the horse poop. Now, when I'm in trance in this reincarnation experience, I'm sitting here going like, did they have horses in Egypt? So yeah. it makes me, I didn't know that. I thought they were all camels. Seriously. Oh, yeah. I thought they were all camels back then. But then I learned later on that they did have horses. So then I said, okay, then this is real. I'm not making this stuff up in my head because that's the first thing you think about. Did I make that up? And then what happened was, dun, 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 <laughs> I was in trouble uh -oh. because I ended up passing on secret information. Well, I'm a professional psychic, right? <laughs> so I'm still passing on secret information that people normally aren't privy to mm -hmm. through training I'm able to see it right uh -huh. through years and years of training so they say in certain lifetimes we keep repeating similar themes so I ended up I mean look at Marcy Caliber as a teacher that's knowledge being a psychic psychic that's knowledge also as this little horseshoe 
no, not horseshoe, as this little uh, kid in the horse barn, <coughs> I got caught because I was passing on secret information. They caught me, but I was running. And let me tell you what I saw. I kept running and running and running and running. I knew they were after me. And so the thing that was really strange was it was almost like little gangways that I was running through streets. And they were brick or mortar. And the, the houses, they were just like walls with uh, doors and windows in them. And, you know, streets that went around kind of in little curves. And I was like, man, I've never seen anything like this before. I must be making this up. And this is as an adult, like I said, I never studied history, so I, I never even went into the books and went to different, you know, looked at different countries to see what they looked like, ever. That's why I'd have to trust what I'm seeing in my head. And I ended up um, running, running, running down these gangways or these streets. And uh, <coughs> they caught me, they brought me to the king. And of course I was, you know, they cut off my hands, they cut off my feet. And I'm sure I died after that, because um, I don't remember anything after that. <laughs> and um, when I came out of that trance, each and every time I've done a past life regression, I've gone to look to see if the information is accurate, because I haven't known any of this stuff ahead of time. So I've done a lot of research afterward. When I saw what Egyptian streets looked like, I was floored. That's what I was running down. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I'd never seen them before. So, so what, I mean, how would you feel about that, Kim, if you were in your head seeing these visions? What would that make you think about reincarnation? Well, I'm always curious. So, I mean, I'm curious to see. I would be curious to have uh, just a experience to begin with, actually. Okay. Yeah. And then what if it proved it to you time and time again? What would you say yourself? Yeah, I probably would think like you, like I'm probably nuts <laughs> first. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You, you just never know. You just never know, you know. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. To say the least. There was a little boy. I heard a story recently. And I've actually heard a couple of these stories. There was a little boy that came uh, into the news because he was telling his mom and dad that and he and it was really funny because he used to put everything in his mouth like he wanted cigars right <laughs> so he put everything in his mouth like he's holding like this fatty this cigar in his mouth smoking it and um and he said that he lived in the other city like a couple of cities over or something and they're like no 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 and he said i know i know i live there he said take me there so thank God these people, I believe they were Indian, East Indian, took him there. He goes, stop, stop, that's my house, that's my house. That's my house, right? My wife lives there. Oh, wow. So they, they had him walk up there, and he's like, hi, honey, or blah, blah, blah. And she's like, Psh, who are you? Who's this <laughs> kid? Right, why is this child calling me honey? <clears throat> they went in to talk. And they said that um, every single thing he said, he knew about her life, knew about this, knew about that. He knew everything about their life together. And she, to the point where she finally, finally said, you are my husband. You are my reincarnated husband. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Yeah. So, uh, but I think he had to go home with his mom and dad. <laughs> 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 Got to go home with us now, honey. You're our child this lifetime. <laughs> Probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, right? <laughs> Date her when you grow up, son. <laughs> Date her again when you grow up. Um, so then there was another story that I recently heard, and a very similar background. And this young child said, I know who killed me. I know who killed me in my last lifetime. And through this little child's... Uh, memories of his past life now this was a recent story this was not a long time ago this reincarnation story this young man was able to pinpoint his murderer um, I believe I could be wrong in this I don't think I am but I believe that they were able to find the murder weapon also and it got solved yes and he got caught 
<coughs> he got caught, and um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure that he went to jail. Well, that'd be a good purpose for it. That'd be a great purpose for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because again, you get you get some souls that are um, how can I say it? You know, some people when they die because they don't believe in God, they don't believe in reincarnation, or they do believe in God so much, and they feel that they have sinned so much that they are unforgivable. And so they'll get trapped down here on the earth plane and stuff. And that's where we have ghosts, or that's where we have, you know, we have the hauntings. Uh, there are some people um, like us, and I've done this in the past, uh, we're spirit workers. We're, you know, we're going to, it's called soul rescue. And pretty much you go into an altered state, and you, and you look around uh, asking, is there anyone that needs help that's dead, and they're stuck on the other side because they did not make their full transition. So um, you sit here, and if somebody said, yes, yes, it's me, well, I've got a perfect story for this, so I'll, I'll tell you about this one story. I was doing a soul rescue session one day, and there was a man, um, and I believe it was, I believe the first name was Bill. So he said, yes, I'm ready to go, and I said, okay. Now remember, when you do work like this, it's, it's just right there, you just you get all these pictures, it's just amazing. So I said, okay, Bill, I said, how are you doing? He says, can you get me out of here? I said, get you out of here, out of where? He goes, I'm in the water, it's cold, it's so cold. And I'm like, oh my God, positively, I'll get you out of here, this is not a problem, come on, let's go. He goes, I'm not going unless my friends can come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, great, great. How many friends I are we said, getting out of here? Right, <laughs> right. Well, there are two other guys, so you've got Bill, I think it, Bill, Bob, and Jim is what I believe the names were. And I said, my God, I said, what happened that you're in this water? He goes, well, and he, so you have to know when you're talking with these people, it's just like me talking with you. So, Kim, what happened today? <laughs> well, I got, you know, there's this guy over at the, you know, at the gas station. And then you, the story unravels. So I said, okay, what is it that has you guys in the water here? And he said, well... He said, we had a boating accident. Mm. He said, we're all drinking. We had an accident. Down we went. We drowned. We're dead. I said, okay, well, you know, what happened? So as I'm sitting here talking with him, you know, uh, I'm getting the complete story that he was very upset because his wife died of cancer. Oh. So as you're doing this work, whether you're hypnotizing somebody and they're remembering it, you know, this was not hypnotizing anyone. You know, he's just telling me straight up, him in conversation with him, this is what happened. And it's like, okay. And then you start picking up the other information around the story. So his wife died. She had cancer. And when you work with people, you normally have them, um, when they go into the light, you say, look over your left shoulder. I want you to see somebody at that light that you loved dearly when you were alive. Well, his wife appeared. So that was really neat. But before we got to that point, what was amazing was, I said, are you guys ready to go? And, he, and they said, yes, we are. I told you what my normal process is. Okay, you guys, look over your left shoulder. No way, right? I mean, she was at the light, but it was a different thing that happened. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's red, white, and blue. There were flags, there were, the, it was draped around and there were three of them. They were having a military send off. Oh. I've got goosebumps, I can hardly stand it. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen in my whole life in doing this spiritual work. I'm going like, oh my God, the bands were playing. I mean, it, it has made me cry in the past. I was going like, oh my God, you guys were in the military. You so, so deserve this. Mm. It really makes me feel like crying right now. So um, every time you do the soul rescue work, you really have no idea what you're going to find, right? So these men, they were so proud of themselves. They had their, uh, their, their, their naval dress on, you know, and they marched, and that's how they walked into the light. It was a fascinating experience for me to have because I'd been doing the soul rescue work for so long. I was like, I've never seen this before. And, and to me, that's how I know it's real. So they went their way. They went to leave their way. Yes. That's what it was about then. Yeah, and they were in the military, going. though. If you, if you put your life on the line for our country, you know, and of course, they didn't expect to drown in a boat and die that way. 
I'm sure they expected that when they were going to die, they were going to have a military send-off, salutes, everything else. Well, guess what? They got it. That's they neat. got it. Uh, you know, it reminds me of another story, which is very fascinating. Um, there was this woman. Actually, I do house parties. Okay. <laughs> And I was at this house party, and these people were complaining about this woman. And I, I had, well, let me say this. At first, I said to the hostess, I said, you know, you've got a dead lady here. She goes, I know. You can see her? And I said, <laughs> yes, I can. And she goes, oh, my God, I can't wait for my husband to come home. Tell him. And so <laughs> it was kind of funny. So I was, you know, packing up, getting ready to leave. And I said, oh, by the way, sir, you have... A dead woman here. He goes, good, take her with you. Oh, my God, why did you say that? <laughs> as soon as he said that, I got a raging, horrible migraine headache. Oh, no. As soon as he said that. <sighs> Fine. Come on, lady. Come on, ma'am. Come <laughs> with me. I'll do some work with you. <laughs> I have to do some work because she's attached on to me. Oh, no. And she's giving me a big headache. And I was going like, dang it. So we got into the car. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I said, OK, ma'am. I said, do you realize you're dead? Well, a lot of people don't realize they're dead. Because again, many people will die. And they're just kind of like floating around. And it's like, OK. So they don't even get in line to get the, you know, go through the life review and get the you know, chance for reincarnation at that point. That's why, you know, we need more people to help do, you know, the spirit work, the soul rescue work and stuff. So, um, so then I'm sitting here talking with her, and I said, I said, all right, ma'am. I said, um, I want you to, you know, we talked, we chatted for a little while. I said, I want you to look over your left shoulder. And I said, I want you to see this light. When you see this beautiful beam of bright white light coming down from heaven, I want you to see somebody that loved you when you were alive here. And I'm waiting. Uh oh. <laughs> and I'm waiting and waiting. And no one. And I mean, I'm looking over, I'm looking <laughs> over her shoulders like, hey, where are you guys? Come on, hurry up. She needs some help here. And uh, still nobody. And I said, ma'am, wasn't there somebody that loved you when you were alive here? And what I got was she was in a, uh, an adoption agency. Um, she went through a really horrible time growing up. She was kind of a cranky old girl, right? So she wasn't a friend maker. And I said, ma'am, wasn't there somebody that loved you when you were alive? And suddenly there was a seeing eye dog. A oh. seeing eye dog. She was blind. So, oh. so it's really rewarding when you do this work, but these are things that you just don't expect. <laughs> I know it still makes me emotional when I think about it. And this dog loved her so much, and he walked her into the light. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that a nice. cool story? <laughs> that's very cool. So it's, it's just really, um, it's, I'm sorry for getting emotional. I normally don't. Um, it's amazing the things that come up when you're doing um, this kind of work. And to me, when I see this stuff, how many people don't we have here that have had some pretty tough lessons? I mean, that girl must yeah. have had a horrible lesson. But again, it's called karma, the law of karma. And so let's say if, um, let's say if you had a lifetime in which you may have killed somebody, you might be killed the next lifetime. You know, it's horrible when we think about it right now. You know, it's like, wow, that happened. and. You know, uh, when I look at people's lives many times at this point, I go like, wow, I wonder what lessons they're learning. You know, can I be of help? Yes, I'd love to help somehow. But I also wonder what lessons that they're here to learn. You know, somebody might be um, very rich one lifetime, and then have to, and if they were amazing being a rich person, they might come back and just continue to be rich and be a philanthropist and help, help everybody. If they were really dingy and miserly and stuff like this, <laughs> they'd probably come back as a poor person the next time to see what it feels like. Because again, the law of karma and the law of reincarnation, the law of karma is that you're going to come back and you're going to balance out any of the wrongs that you had done. Okay, so it comes to balance. 
That's where you're supposed to have all of these experiences. So you can go like, wow, I, I saved so, these, so many people. And it's like, wow, I needed to be saved in this oh, lifetime. Wow. <laughs> right? I didn't think about it that way either. Yeah, yeah. There was a cute story that uh, somebody had told me about these two angels being together. One was a senior angel and one was a new angel. And by the way, when you die, you can become uh, a spirit guide for people. So when you're done on this earth plane, you can graduate and go to be a spirit worker on the other side. And that's what a lot of people do. I'd like to do that job. Okay. <laughs> we'll set it up for you. <laughs> anyway, so the story was that here's this angel. And he says to the young angel, he goes, I want you to sit here and just be quiet and watch. So there's this man, and this is happening in a park. So this man goes by, and he's running, running, running. He's a robber. He's running, running, running. He's got this big bag of money, and he puts it underneath the bench. He's looking around, looking around. The cops are coming. He takes off. He leaves the money underneath the bench, right? So... <laughs> He, um, an, an innocent bystander comes walking by, you know, he's jogging. Oh, my God, he's so tired. Sits on the bench. You know, he's looking around, looks under the bench a little bit, and it's like, there's a bag. I wonder what's in the bag. <laughs> he opens it. He goes like, holy crap, <laughs> look at all this money. And, of course, he was looking. There was no n name on it, nothing else there. And so he's getting the sense of, like, nobody's around. No one's seeing me. I'm taking this bag. I'm taking up with this money. And the young angel looks at the senior angel and says, how is that fair? He goes, somebody just got robbed, and this guy just walked off with the money, the poor the guy that got robbed. And the senior angel said, yes, but the guy that just got robbed robbed this man in a past lifetime, and the robber was the one that was bringing him money, his money back to him. Oh, <laughs> so the guy that found the money, it was his money from a past lifetime. It was just being returned to him. So that's kind of a lesson in reincarnation. Mm. That's pretty neat. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. I mean, there are so many things that happen in life that we don't, you know, we don't stop and think about. And we, we think that, wow, this is completely unfair. And then you have to ask yourself, is it? <laughs> you know? I, I saw an article where Gandhi had said, uh, to be centered is to be without, to be truly centered is to be without a reaction, being unreactive. Can we go through life every day? I mean, oh my God, I still have many reactions to different things. And then when I see myself reacting, I have to get myself and get myself regrounded and ask myself, what am I reacting to? You know. And uh, sometimes we're going to react to things that just make no sense whatsoever. Have you ever walked down the street and you said, I know that person? Yes, many times. You have, right? Yes, I have. You know what that's called? Mm -mm. Soul recognition. Mm, really? <laughs> yes. But you haven't met them in this lifetime, right? No. And you know it for sure. Yeah, I, I've had a lot of people actually come up to me and say to me, you look familiar. I'm like, I must have a lot of twins out there. Yeah, Yeah, and yet you probably knew these people in different lifetimes. Then I'd always ask them, was, was it a nice, you know, <clears throat> who do I look like? Is that a good thing to you? <laughs> oh, there you go. Right? <laughs> Did you have a good experience? That's good. <laughs> I'm so glad I have a face that looks good. <laughs> right? Yeah. So have you met people that you've had an instant liking to and became friends with? Yes. 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 And you can't explain it, right? Right. No. It's like, how did we just become great friends? And it's like, it feels like I've known you before. Yeah. So it's that, because you have. <laughs> because you have. How many husbands and wives, how many people meet, and, they're, and the, the word soulmate, right? Yeah. So how many people meet, and um, they're like, I know you're my soulmate, because they've been together many, many past lives. Now, you can mm -hmm. have soulmates that are uh, soulmates from um, a good lifetime, and you have soulmates that are like, whoopsies, <laughs> you know. 
that you were supposed to still have lessons with. Okay, so uh, normally you have the sense of this is such a good feeling, we're soulmates, you know, I'm so in love <laughs> with you, but you can still have soulmates that you've traveled the country with many times over the world, planet Earth, and, um, and know that you're coming back and you're going to keep coming back, and you're going to keep coming back. And, you know, it's, it's called group souls. We come back as group souls also, probably like your family has been together many lifetimes, your family and friends, my family and friends. We've traveled before. I know I've, I've had a regression with my sister in a past lifetime. Uh, I've seen different people. Like, I know that, like one of my... Um, I can say one of my grandchildren. I know that we're soulmates. Well, actually, probably several of them. But there's just a... Um, connection. A complete, certain connection where we just, like, completely know each other. We can read each other. We just know what the next person's going to say. Mm -hmm. That's what people... You can have a soulmate that's a same-sex soulmate. It doesn't have to be a love relationship, you know, things like that. And then there's the topic of twin souls. Twin souls are from, you might want to say, from the same flame, okay? And it means that the soul broke off, went to have different lessons, and then when you die, you'll reconnect again. Now, many people will meet their twin flame, and they'll either have an amazing relationship with this person because I'm you, you're me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know you, you know me. Now, sometimes you might have uh, twin souls, and I've had that experience, where you get together, you know it, you can feel it, and then something will break you apart because you're not done with these lessons, and you cannot learn them together. So you have to go back on different paths again. So that, mm. that is just completely fascinating. That is very fascinating. Yeah, yeah. So who do you think in your life, who can you say have been soulmates to you? Oh, Lordy. Um, maybe a roommate I had. Okay. Yeah. A complete connection. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, we got along very well and always have fun and, uh, yeah. Isn't that yep. neat? Yep. Yeah. So, um... Now, people, people have asked me in the past regarding reincarnation, can animals reincarnate? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> yeah, isn't that cool? So, um, <laughs> so have you had any animals that you feel that may have reincarnated? Like you've had this pet and you're like, wow, that pet just seems like, little, like Buster. I, it just feels like Buster. Um, yeah, maybe a cat, actually. Okay. Yeah. So what cat was it that came to you later in life and that you feel was uh, your past pet? Um, I had a barn cat. It was like my first cat, actually. Mm -hmm. And then I actually had uh, a cat of my own mm -hmm. named Shadow, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a good cat, you know. I just had a good connection with it and didn't have any problems with that cat. So it reminded me, I think, maybe of the other one. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a lot, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. It didn't look, they didn't look alike, but, you know, the mannerisms of them, maybe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, um, I had a dog, Black Lab. Um, she passed away, and uh, suddenly, so it was very, very sad. And um, what was interesting about her is that one day, I was, years later, I had moved from Chicago, Indiana and I was in my kitchen uh, actually I was walking past my hallway and suddenly I glanced over and I was like oh, princess <laughs> come here by mommy come here and all of a sudden I it's like I it was like I shifted in between time and space like I went back years ago when she was alive but she was right there and I was like oh my god and I was so excited to see her so that's like a, an emotional response right so I know her soul was showing herself Somebody had dropped my black leather coat on the floor in the hallway. One of my grandkids did. <laughs> but that was enough for that black background for her to transpose her spirit on it. I got to see her for a little bit. And then, of course, she disappeared and then recognized it was my leather coat. Oh, wow. So I was like, dang it. God, that was so real. Well, it was real. 
because her soul was here. Her spirit was here. So then I picked up my coat, put it away. And for me, at that time, I was going like, well, am I making that up? Come on, you know. <laughs> you know. Well, now, doing my work over 30 years, you can tell when there's something going on there, when a spirit's come to visit you. So the next day, I had a family party. It was a nice, warm, hot summer day. It was beautiful. Everyone was over. And I had a black cat called Egypt. And she walked underneath the table. And suddenly, I was like, I had a glimpse of Princess, my black lab, and the whole house filled up with the smell of wet dog. Yeah. That's a very distinctive smell. Yeah. My, I hadn't smelled it in years since my dog was alive. And it was just amazing. So that was my second confirmation that Princess had been there visiting. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. So I, I had a, a dog pass away, okay. and uh, I've been around a couple other dogs, and they remind me of my. Is that the same thing, or is that different? Well, it can, re it can remind you of the pet, or if you see very similar um, experiences where, all right, so this will be a, a, another example. I had a beautiful white cat by the name of Snowball that died, and this cat was, I mean, I've got a couple of stories about Snowball. He was just an amazing cat. I was at this lady's house party. You know, and I normally will go into a, a bedroom to do psychic readings or something. She had this beautiful white cat that would never, ever, ever go by any human beings at all. And um, when I was doing the house party, this cat came up, looked just like Snowball, walked up to me like Snowball did all the time, <laughs> sat on the bed, let me pet the cat. And I was going like, I know who you are, honey. I know who you are right and so that was my cat coming in through this cat's body because I missed that cat so badly I missed my cat I love that cat so much that my cat has been um, went and was cremated and that cat will be buried with me oh when I die that's how much I love that cat a lot <laughs> a lot so I knew that my cat was coming back to visit me by coming through this cat when um, I had said good night to the lady. I said, your cat's beautiful. She goes, what do you mean? I said, your white cat came up and was laying with me, sitting down with me, and I was petting it. She was like, what? She goes, that cat would never let anybody, anybody touch her. <laughs> I was like, really? She says, yep, no one has ever touched that cat. I says, well, for tonight, that wasn't your cat. <laughs> <laughs> that was my cat. That was my cat that Aww. passed away. So, um... You know, when I think about the, uh, the past life regressions, I totally believe that our soul uh, is here only for a very short period. You know when they say the, grands, the sands, the grains of sand on the beaches and stuff like that? That to me is like all of eternity. And these lifetimes that we have are just a blink in time. They're just a little bit of time that we have in all of eternity. And, you know, for reincarnation, I don't know, um, you know, we always work hard at being the very best we can be, you know, um, because we want our soul to continue on a very happy path. And even when people have had their, you know, their mistakes or their lessons, you know, it's not the end all to your soul. It just isn't. You know, if you make a mistake, then you want to, you know, you know, confess your mistakes, you know, apologize, because it's your soul that you're looking to perfect, and you're trying to be the very best you can be. So when you know that there's some wrongdoing or whatever, um, you know, God came down, he's given us the Ten Commandments, things like that. Um, there are amazing guidelines for us to follow, you know, reading the Bible, stuff like this. You know, you want to you wanna make sure that um, you do the best in this lifetime. Don't count on coming back <laughs> so you can do what you want this lifetime. You know, horse around this lifetime and come back uh, and correct it next, next lifetime. You know, you just want to make sure that you keep doing the very best you can, that you know. And, um, and it's always, you know, being good to each other. You know, treat somebody as well as you want to be treated, that sort of thing. And, um, and just know that if you've had a really, really, really hard lifetime, um, just know that God is completely watching over you. 
And I almost feel like reincarnation is that safe gate, you know, that, you know, don't worry, I've got something in the back. You know, you're covered. You're going to be okay. Um, but just know that everything is going to be okay. And that, you know, we're going to all make it back to God, to the universal God for us. It's just going to happen that way. So the reincarnation to me has, has left me, I didn't believe in it before. And when I didn't believe in it before, I thought, well, that's crummy. I've got no way of correcting, you know, what I did wrong outside of, you know, asking God to forgive me and stuff like that. But when I learn about reincarnation, it's like, wow, if I screwed it up this time, I get to fix it next time. <laughs> you know, but I still, it's always better to try to fix your stuff this lifetime. Be good to yourself. Be good to other people. Um, check out the reincarnation. Check out your past lives. Uh, you might find that this is maybe why you are this way today. Uh, maybe this is why you have these interests. And the past life stuff, oh my God, even if you want to become a hypnotherapist and help people with past life regressions, it's amazing because it helps people heal the stuff, not only from the past, but from the stuff that we had to go through this lifetime too. And it just gives your soul complete peace, you know, and, and comfort, and comfort. And then even with that, you get to see the people from past lives, or you get to meet some people that, that you know in this lifetime that you know for sure you've been together. So it's really, it's really just amazingly fascinating, fascinating yeah. work. I, I, think that, I think that part would be really exciting, actually, to be able to um, help others move through the past life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's neat. Yeah, and also come to peace with uh, anything that we need to come to peace with so that when we do make our transitions, when we do die in this lifetime, you don't have to worry about getting stuck. You don't have to worry about somebody doing the soul rescue work. Oh, I'm going to come and help you. <laughs> if you do, know that there's people like me out there helping you. A lot of other Thank goodness. <laughs> spiritual rescue people, stuff like that. Kim, I, I've just had an amazing time today yes. with you. I want to thank you so much for coming and joining <laughs> us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, there's a, a lot of other things out in the universe, and maybe we'll come back and talk about some other things outside of reincarnation and soul rescue work and past lives and stuff like that. Would you uh, be interested in that? Sounds fun. <laughs> All right, that sounds great. That sounds great. Yes. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us here at River West Flowing, and we will see you again at a later time. Bye, everybody. Yeah.